We are announcing a new training class teamed up with the Savage Training Group September 18th, hosted by the Santa Clara Police Department, Patrol Survival Tactics taught by Mark and I. We will be at the Santa Clara Police Department September 18th. Go to savagetraininggroup.com, get signed up and get registered before tickets sell out. They're moving further away from me. Go, 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 keep moving! I'm about pulling away from where I'm moving, trying to get to them. They're still shooting. I'm passing the engine. I'm moving as fast as I can trying to get over there. I don't know where he's at. That's why we're police, I got him down. guys just watched was an active shooter at the Allen Premium Outlets. This incident happened on May 6th of 2023 at the Allen Police Department or the town of Allen yeah. in the state of Texas. Yeah. Absolutely wild. And the body cam was just released. It was, yeah. And this has been circulating the internet for the last couple days. When you first watch this video, I think everyone's going to think, you know, 
the officer did a great job and he did. He did a fantastic job. The point of what we do, I think, and what some of the people were saying online and social media as this video was circulating, uh, people started to pick apart a little bit about his fitness. You know, there's a couple parts in the body cam footage where, you know, he obviously he's walking, he's trying to catch his breath and, he, and he's clearly out of breath, right? Yeah. Um, so we marked the time actually, which was uh, 3.35 is when he was goes from talking to the family, totally unaware of what's going on. He's just, he happens to be in the outlet parking lot to, he thinks he hears gunshots you know, his brain is probably going, is that what I think it is? He doesn't want to assume that that's what it is because, I mean, who who's who thinks that they're just going to be in, in the middle of an active shooting event, right? No, nobody yeah. probably is going to be thinking that honestly. Yeah. So now his brain has to go from zero to a thousand. And uh, when you talk about what that does to your body and all the chemicals and everything that just gets dumped into you when you go from zero to a hundred, it's, it's very hard to, to imagine. It's hard to describe to people unless you've actually experienced it. And I just don't think people are seeing that side of it. I don't think they're factoring the science into this and why he looked possibly fatigued as he's trying to run to the active shooter and trying to find him. Not alone, he didn't even know where the gunshots were coming from. So I'm, like, I want to break all that down and give the viewers a good idea of what that actually is like, because you and I have both have experienced it. We've both been in shootings. Um, I've been in multiple situations where there's active stimulus coming towards me, gunfire. Uh, it's scary. Like it's crazy scary. And to honestly ask a human being to go running into a situation like that, to go hunt down somebody shooting, a uh, not only just, not just any firearm, either a rifle, our body armor, isn't going to stop a rifle round. No. And to actually, Ask somebody to go do that is very difficult thing to do. And I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do for a living. That's a hard thing to ask of anybody. Uh, and the fact that he did do it and eliminated that threat, I mean, speaks volume to, to that, to that officer. So let's just, let's start from the beginning. Um, like what was your initial reaction or thought when you watched the body cam footage? To, to be honest, to me, that officer is a hero, hundred percent hero. He did, in my opinion, just based on watching the body camera, a phenomenal job. And you talked about the shots being fired. When you hear shots being fired out outside of a controlled environment, like a shooting range, yeah, they sound different. It's it not like in the movies. It's a different sound. You're in a mall. There's different buildings. There's a lot of vehicles. Sound echoes. Like the it, you don't really know where it's coming from. What type of a weapon it is. And for him to to go from talking to a lady and two kids at a super mellow mellow tone, we see it's like three thirty p.m. So he's probably working day shift. I think you looked up the time or the temperature that day on May six. It was eighty seven degrees, and he's wearing a full uniform. To hear that, to process that, and then to respond to it is is heroic. I mean, it is a, he he's a hero, and watching him grab his rifle and make that decision to leave his patrol car and just run to the stimulus is, is what you said. It's a big ask, you know, we totally is the general public expects that, but the reality is some are not going to do that. And this officer took zero hesitation and did it. Yeah. We know. Well, yeah, we know some cops, not all cops are going to do that. True. I mean, that's just a known thing. Yeah. Um, so you talk about a guy who's in condition green, which is just, he's mellow. Like you said, he's talking to the family all as well. And then all of a sudden now he's flipped into condition red where it's like, it's go time. And, and you can see it, it like clicks in his brain. That is what I think it is. And that's gunshots. He does a good job. He puts it out. Uh, you know, yeah, he decided to leave his patrol car behind. I, I it's, the guy didn't know where the gun gunfire is coming from. And you know, if I'm in his shoes, I'm probably doing the same thing yeah. And because yeah, you can get from point A to point B a lot faster utilizing a vehicle. But if you don't know where that stimulus is coming from, you have all of those cars in the parking lot. You have a ton of different buildings to use as cover. I mean, there's plenty of cover to yeah. be utilized on foot than I think there is in a car. And I think you're almost more of a target in your car than you are on foot. But so I think that kind of takes away that argument is he just didn't know where it was coming from. And like you said, dude, when you're hearing gunshots in, in, in a real world environment, you're right, dude. It, 
it bounces off buildings. It's, you know, what sounds like it could be really loud and really close to you. It actually might be a lot further away and then vice versa. I've been in situations where the gunfire was a lot closer than it actually was. And I thought it was further away. So it's just really hard to, to tell by the sound of gunfire where exactly it's coming from. Um, and, I, and I think him responding to that, not taking the patrol car was a good decision. And then we, you know, we've followed the social media and we've walked, looked at some of the posts and stuff. And there's some people that are saying negative things potentially about his physical fitness level. And to me, I don't know what his physical level is. We don't see that yeah. picture of him. He could be a complete stud or, or just someone that doesn't work out at all. But fitness is a major role in this. And, and I really believe the better shape you are in, you're going to handle that. And we watched and tracked the time. It was about two minutes of, of him running. And you got to take in perspective, he's wearing not running shoes. There's yeah. some type of boots or, or a patrol boot or a patrol tennis shoe of some sort that's not designed for sprinting. He's wearing pants. He's wearing a heavy duty belt. That's probably 40 pounds around his waist, a vest on, and then he's carrying a rifle. So your arms aren't and don't have the capability to swing like a normal runner. So it, it's much harder to run in a patrol uniform and carrying a rifle. And if you look at the two minute time frame, that's about a pretty good jog around a football field. Like a quarter mile is, is what you could kind of track a two minute pace at. And to expect somebody to stop at two minutes of, after running a quarter mile, talk without having any loss of breath and to, to manage that situation and coordinate is not practical. Like you, you're talking about yeah, running. Pl plus put out radio traffic, plus be on the lookout for where this dude's coming from. Plus he's bypassing victims. Yeah. And pl plus he's trying to get all the other bystanders out of there. They don't have any, there's no way those people knew what was going on. No. They probably can't hear that gunfire. A lot of them were in cars. People probably just see a cop running down the parking lot, holding a rifle in their hand. They have no idea what's going on. And he's trying to coordinate all of that. Yeah. In that, in trying to, trying to process what's happening, run, know where you're going, put out on the radio where you're at because additional units are responding and he's moving. So he needs to update that. That's, that's a lot to it's ask. A ton. It's and, a ton. And he did a good job. He did. He did. He did. Uh, he did a phenomenal job. And, 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 you know, going back to being physically fit, it's, it's equally as important to be physically fit as it is mentally fit in this job because you could be a track all-star stud, but if you're not mentally capable of doing what that guy did, and running into gunfire, you're, you're of no good to anybody. Then I, it really doesn't matter how fit you are at that point, because you, you're not willing to put yourself in the situation to potentially get killed. And one last thing to add on that, you know, they say smooth is fast. If you were to say a hundred yards, sprint full hundred yards, as fast as you can, as hard as you can carrying that rifle and then take accurate shots yeah, I don't think versus jogging three quarter speed, and then coming to that hundred yard line and then taking accurate shots. I, I think if, if you're unsure of that, you should try that at the range because burnout and then trying to, to make an, an actual target is, is very hard. Yeah. And that's why, uh, gosh, we had Eric Eltz on and, you know, he talked a lot about, you know, range culture and stuff. And you, these are the things that, you know, if you're a cop and you're listening to this, you got to be practicing this stuff at the range. Don't wait for game day to throw your, you know, on a hot day to, to with all of your equipment on, to go do a sprint and then take credible, accurate shots. And not only that, but his shots were, I mean, it, it, it was at least a 50 to hundred yard shot. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's a football field. So a lot of discipline. Um, what would you think about the radio traffic? We had talked so, a little bit about it. So I thought the radio traffic on his behalf was good. He, he's trying to put out as much as he possibly can. And, and here's the thing, you know, some people might say, you know, there wasn't enough radio traffic on his behalf. And, and I try to put myself in the shoes of a cop responding to that, right? You're, you're relying on the officer giving the information, right? And, and in our class, you talk a lot about, um, you know, broadcasting information on the radio, the sender, the receiver, what is the receiver, you know, uh, perceiving in their head, right? Uh, a lot of people, I don't think, think about that. It's, it's crucial because you're the one setting the stage for the incoming units to set up where they need to set up. Right. And, and if you give bad information, you might set up people in, in the wrong spots. And, and I've personally been a, in a victim of that. Um, you know, conversely, 
the officer that's sending the information, that him, the officer that's putting out the information, he's having to think of all these things in his head and he's having to come up with this stuff on the fly. Yeah. He's, his brain is trying to process, where is this dude? What am I going to be, what am I going to do? How am I going to react when I see him? You know, he's thinking of all these things, but then he's also responsible for coordinating the response of the units. It's, it's just a lot to ask of somebody. Um, and in this case, you can hear, uh, for those of you who aren't in law enforcement, you can actually hear, and I'll, we'll play this for you. Uh, again, you can hear this, uh, it's like a tone, like a weird tone noise every time he tries to get on the radio. It's like a boop. Um, what, what's that sound? Boop. That is because other people are on the radio and that officer is unable to key up his microphone because you can't have multiple microphones keyed up at the same time. And a lot of our newer radios uh, in today's day and age are all digital. And, you know, back in the day you could cut over people, but you can't anymore. So that's what you're hearing. You're hearing him trying to get on the radio. His partners are obviously talking. Somebody's talking on the radio and he's unable to put out that information. So what I would say to that is... So wait, I, I just want to ask a little further on that. So when you're saying... Somebody else is talking on the radio. He wants to say something, but that boop is- It's being blocked. So he can't talk, but those officers Correct. that are already talking, is it's still continuing. Correct. So okay. whoever's already talking on the microphone, they have the, the air at that point. Okay. You cannot override that person to say what you want to say. So, um, which brings up the topic of radio brevity. Radio, radio brevity is such a big thing. And, and I think a lot of larger agencies are probably a lot better at it just because you have multiple officers. It's, it's a, you know, a lot busier. I think some of the smaller agencies suffer from that uh, because there's less officers. There's not a whole lot. You know, there's less things going on. And so it, it gives you more time to say things on the radio, right? So, um, but radio brevity is an important thing because if this guy's trying to put out where he thinks this guy's at, um, he has to be able to coordinate his incoming units to, to go to that, to, to where the stimulus is coming from. He, he can't do that if, if he can't even talk on the radio. So for those of you listening uh, who are cops, be mindful of that. Be mindful of the situations your partners are in and do you really need to get on the radio? Uh, and if you don't and you don't have pertinent information to say, then, then don't say it. Um, if you have to, and it's not something that everybody else has to hear, then go to, a, if you have the capabilities, go to a different channel and tell a dispatcher on another channel, you know, whatever it is that you need to say. But, you know, I always joke when, uh, when I teach and when we talk about this communication piece is, um, this is called a push to talk, not a push to think. Okay. So <laughs> meaning, uh, know what you want to say and make sure it's important before you say it. And um, is it more important than what's happening? Correct. So yeah, that, that's interesting. The radio part. So I think we're, I think we're a lot of people and look, look, and, and I, we're not even sitting here saying that the guy got dogged on, on social media or whatever. Like there are just people that are, are saying, Hey, look, they, they you know, he's obviously, there's a couple points during the video. He's walking, he's trying to catch his breath. He's clearly out, out of breath. Right. But some of that though, when he's walking it for responding to active shooter, you respond to the stimulus. So he's hearing gunshots you know that's where you're going. And then when the gunshots stop, if you don't know where that suspect is at, you have to process and then you stop and you can keep moving forward. You should, but you stop running and then you process what's happening. And Correct. at one point he says, I don't know where he's at. Correct. And then he's listening. He's listening to the people that are running by. He's telling them to get out. He hears more gunshots and then he starts moving again. So yeah. I think that the, the delay, the slowing, the walking, a lot of that has to play with active shooter response. Yeah, no, you're hundred percent right. And, and clearly you can see in the videos, it's, it's blurred out, but there's uh, victims, yeah. you know, that are obviously laying down and, and he did the right thing and he bypassed the victims. And if anybody's wondering, uh, again, who's not in law enforcement, you know, we're trained to bypass the victims to get to the stimulus because the number one thing you want to, uh, deal with in an active shooter situation is eliminate the threat, right? Stop the dying or stop the threat and then stop the dying. So, that's what, that's what cops are trained to do. And if you're wondering why he was bypassing some of the people that were wounded, um, that's why, because the guy was still actively shooting. Um, what did you think once he shot the suspect, neutralized the threat, and he was moving up, you see his partner show up or another officer that responded? What did you think about that interaction and how that partner was basically 
talking to him, like saying, hey, you're good. What would you think of that? Yeah, that's crucial. Uh, I don't know if any, I don't know how many people picked up on that, but he's, so the officer that engaged him, this, this cop, this body cam video footage that we're watching this entire time, he's clearly, he's way jacked up at this point. So after he shoots the guy, I, I, I want to say there's a, there's almost a sense of, I don't want to say euphoria, but it's almost a sense of like, um, thank God that this is over. Yeah. And this like thousand pound weight lifted off your shoulder when you're involved in a shooting like that, someone's either trying to kill you or somebody else. It's now over. You're alive. You, you came out on top. There is a sense of like, thank God this is done. And you, you feel, you feel good about it, right? Because you're alive and the situation's over and you don't have to worry about dying anymore. Yeah. So he's feeling that for sure. Okay. He's definitely feeling that. At the same time, his adrenaline, I think, just went a step further. And I say that because when he's running up to the guy, he is now, I think, jacked himself up to the point of like, you know, he's yelling at the guy, stay the F down. Yeah, you can um, tell his tone he, he's jacked. Aggressive, yeah. yeah, his tone is aggressive. He's fucking pissed and he should be. And his partner shows up and he's like, dude, he's like, you're good. You're good, dude. It's all good. Yeah. Right? Like just that little, that little bit from his partner and kudos for him because he's showing up to this. He's fucking jacked up too. Yeah. Like his, his adrenaline is freaking raging. I mean, he's showing up to a legit active shooter and he's calm and he's like telling him, Hey man, you're good. Uh, which brought, brought him down. So kudos to the, to the partner who showed yeah. up. I mean, uh, that is a, that's a good partner right there. I mean, even if, removing that cop from the whole scenario, your role is done at that point. Okay. Um, there's a time and a place for that. Not every shooting incident you're involved in, you can just be removed from the situation as the shooter. Uh, but as things digress and, and wind down, then a good partner should, uh, remove that, the person from the scene. Um, yeah. you know, but unfortunately this too is so active. I mean, there's people that are shot things still have to be get done. Right. And you don't know if there's other shooters out there. I mean, there's a whole, whole gamut of things that have to be taken in consideration, but, uh, nonetheless, uh, regarding the partner, I thought he did, I thought he did such a good job. Yeah. Um, that's responding. a level headed partner to, to calm somebody down, to be in control himself, to recognize somebody else might be at their peak and then to bring him back. That's stellar. That's hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. Kyle dude. So just watching that body camera, we've talked about this quite a bit in depth. I think I would say overall, I believe that officer did a really good job. I do too. And I think you really put into perspective and we talked about like the, the level of fitness. And I think it just highlights why it is so important as a police officer to take fitness serious and to be physically fit in your career, because this officer ran a long ways. If he was not in shape uh, and did not work out, I don't think that officer would be able to respond to this. They, they probably wouldn't make it to the scene. Other officers would arrive. That officer that's, that's not in shape would be out of breath and, and might possibly not be able to do anything. Yeah, or, or get to it and then not even be able to take an accurate shot because he's just so gassed. Yeah, and I think I, I know you, the public expects the most and best from our officers. And I think this was a good demonstration of that, uh, of, of a good response. Yeah. I agree. Um, you guys, there's a ton of organizations out there too, that you can donate money to, uh, fit for duty foundation is, is a friend of ours, uh, TJ Webb, he runs it and he's literally building a program to sponsor cops, to be able to get gym memberships and pay for them to go be active in the gym. So there are plenty of programs out there that you can donate to. Um, it, it is for a good cause. These things are not going away. They're happening more and more often. But Kyle, I definitely agree with you. So that wraps up this week's body cam breakdown. We'll see you on the next one.